Hello and welcome to the viewers of this video. This is the Orange Fan here bringing you another entry for the episode Recap and Thoughts category. This video will be dedicated to the A segment of episode 64 of The Loud House, Gown and Out. We begin this segment at Royal Woods Elementary School, which is hosting the Little Miss Royal Woods pageant. Lola is a participant in this pageant, and the rest of the Loud family are in the audience. We get to see Lola's part in both the talent portion, where she performs a ribbon dance, and the interview portion for this pageant. Lincoln praises Lola's performance in both portions of this pageant, and Lynn inquires Lincoln about how he knows so much about pageant-related matters. Lincoln brings up the time when he was the pageant coach for the twins in the Season 1 segment, Toads and Tiaras. Lincoln then notices that Cheryl is about to announce the winner for this pageant, and shortly afterwards, Cheryl does just that. Cheryl reveals that Lola is the winner for this pageant. A little while later, we see Lola has reunited with the rest of her family. Rita speaks on behalf of the rest of the family when she congratulates Lola for her victory in this pageant. Cheryl then approaches the Loud family and reveals that Lola winning this pageant means that Lola is now qualified to participate in the Little Miss Southeastern Michigan pageant. This surprises Lola because this will be the first time Lola participates in a regional pageant. Cheryl then reveals that the pageant will take place next weekend. This surprises the Loud parents because they already have commitments that weekend. Lynn Sr. has a pastry workshop and Rita has a dental conference, to be more specific. But because this is Lola's first chance at the big times, the Loud parents do come up with a solution. They look over towards Lori, and Lori immediately figures out that the Loud parents want her, Lori, to chaperone Lola uh, for this upcoming pageant. Lori says that she would rather spend her weekend doing something else, but when Rita offers to include a spa package, Lori agrees to chaperone Lola. Lola hugs Lori and thanks Lori for agreeing to chaperone her for this upcoming pageant. Ne the next scene, uh, yes, the next scene uh, jumps ahead to the next uh, to the next weekend. Yes, the next scene jumps ahead to the next weekend, and we see Lori and Lola have arrived at the hotel where this pageant will be taking place at. Lori and Lola are checking into the hotel, and while they're doing that, Lola notices three other pageant contestants nearby. So Lola decides to greet these pageant contestants and inquire them about if they're excited uh, to participate in this regional pageant. The three other pageant contestants reveal their names to be China with two H's, Jackie and Claudette. China admits that she's not too excited about uh, this regional pageant because she participated in a national pageant the previous year. Jackie then mentions that China holds the record for the most wins in the field before age seven. Uh, China then mentions that Jackie has participated in toothpaste commercials. Claudette reveals that uh, her gowns are all made in Paris, and all of these revelations start to make Lola nervous. Uh, when the three other pageant contestants inquire Lola about herself, Lo Lola, um, yes, Lola takes the chance to excuse herself from the conversation when Lori mentions that she acquired their room key. So after Lola excuses herself from the conversation, she starts to talk to herself to calm herself down. She tries to assure herself that she still has a chance of winning this pageant, even though some of the other pageant contestants have impressive track records. A little while later, we see Lori and Lola are outside of the room where the rehearsals are going to take place in. Lori wishes Lola luck with the rehearsals, and Lola wishes Lori a good time at the spa. Lori says she has every intention to enjoy her time at the spa, but when Lori goes to the desk for the spa, she finds out that, um, that the spa is completely booked for the uh, day. Lori inquires if there's any way to squeeze her in, but the employee uh, 
Um, yes, the employee says that there's no way to squeeze Lori in for today. Lori is disappointed, but she says that she understands, and she'll try again the next day. Uh, in the room where the rehearsals are being held, um, Lola sees that uh, Jackie will be performing a gymnastics routine for the uh, talent portion, um, or at least for the rehearsals. Yes, um, for rehearsals, Jackie will be performing a gymnastics routine for the um, talent portion, and Lola is amazed by Jackie's performance uh, with the gymnastic routine. Lola then is about to prepare a ribbon dance for... Um, uh, for the rehearsals talent portion, but one of the, um, but, uh, one of the, um, or yes, um, Lola's ribbon gets stuck on a nail that wasn't fully nailed down to the floor, and, uh, this causes some embarrassment for Lola. Uh, for the, uh, interview portion of the rehearsal, um, uh, China is inquired about a certain question, and China says that, the answer for this question depends on which perspective you want to look at uh, for this question. And this causes Lola to become nervous. Uh, Lola quickly excuses herself and runs off to uh, the room that she and Lori are staying in. So in that hotel room, Lori is watching some TV and Lola eventually returns to the room. Lori inquires Lola about how the rehearsals went. Lola doesn't want to admit her nervousness. Uh, so she claims that everything went well, and then says that she needs to steam her pores in the, uh, in the bathroom. So Lola goes into the bathroom, she turns the sink on, and then she calls Lincoln through video chat. Lincoln inquires Lola about what's troubling her, and Lola admits that, um, that um, she's feeling nervous because of how uh, the other pageant contestants have rather impressive track records and talent. Lola admits that she thinks the other pageant contestants are better than her, and she's worried about the possibility of losing, but she can't bring herself to actually say the word uh, lose. And um, Lincoln, uh, yes, um, Lola admits that she feels ill just trying to say the word lose. Lincoln, though, tries to cheer Lola up. Lincoln assures Lola that, um, that she's still very talented when it comes to pageants, and Lincoln um, assures Lola that there's still a chance for her to win the pageant. Lincoln then encourages Lola to um, uh, get some sleep so that she can have, um, so that she can be fully rested for the uh, pageant the next day. Lola does thank Lincoln for his advice and uh, his words of encouragement. But after Lola finishes the conversation with Lincoln, she's holding up uh, some makeup items, and Lola starts to get an idea in her head. The next day rolls around, and when Lori wakes up, she sees Lola looks to be ill. In truth, Lola simply used makeup to, um, um, uh, to pretend to be ill, and Lola is pretending to be ill uh, to get out of participating in the pageant. But Lola pretends that she still wants to participate in the pageant, and Lori does fall for the trick. Um, Lori says that um, Lola's health is more important, so Lola will have to sit out of participating in the pageant. And Lola pretends to be disappointed, but in reality, she's glad that the trick worked. Lola then encourages Lori to have a good time at the spa, but Lori says she's not going to go to the spa now. Um, she's going to stay and cheer Lola up. And she thinks that um, a fun sister day, in her words, will do... Um, uh, will do the trick with regards to cheering Lola up. Lola starts to panic uh, and tries to um, assure Lori that she doesn't have to do this. Lori says that she knows she doesn't have to do this, but she wants to do this, so she goes off to the gift shop to acquire some items, and Lola starts to feel guilty. Later on, um, Lori has returned to the hotel room, and Lori has acquired some flowers and balloons to cheer Lola up. Uh, she also acquired some nail polish brands, and Lola notices that these nail polish brands are very fancy. Lori responds that money is no issue when you have an ill sibling, which um, causes Lola to feel more guilty. Lori then calls room service, uh, requesting two chocolate chip cookies and some milk. And uh, Lola is surprised to hear this. Lola brings up that one of these cookies costs $5.95. Lori, though, says that she's more than happy to use her hard-earned babysitting money to help her ill sister, and Lola starts to feel more guilty. 
Later on, we see that Lori is hosting a pretend pageant within the room. Uh, this pretend pageant um, is about um, illness. Um, the intent is, um, yes, Lori's intentions are to lighten the mood by cheering Lola up with her illness by saying Lola wins this illness-themed pageant, uh, uh, this illness-themed pageant, uh, this illness-themed pretend pageant. Uh, yes, Lori's intentions were to lighten the mood to help cheer uh, Lola up. But then Lola can't take it anymore and begins to cry. Lori worries that Lola's illness is worse, is becoming worse. Uh, but Lola reveals that she's not truly ill. She was just pretending uh, to be ill to get out of participating in the pageant, and she um, feels guilty about deceiving Lori. Lori, though, doesn't understand why Lola suddenly doesn't want to be in the pageant when she was excited about it not too long ago. Lola admits that it's true she was excited about participating in her first regional pageant, but after seeing the impressive track records and talents of uh, the other um, pageant contestants, Lola admits that she started to fear the possibility of losing, but uh, Lola can't bring herself to actually say losing. Uh, Lori, though, figures out what Lola is trying to say. Lola then apologizes for the deception, and she says that she wouldn't blame Lori if she were angry at her. Lori, though, um, says that she's not angry at Lola. She actually sympathizes with Lola's fears. And Lori reveals that she sympathizes with Lola's fears because she had a similar experience um, not too long ago. Uh, Lori brings up uh, when the homecoming dance was occurring. Lori says that she almost decided not to attend the homecoming dance because she feared that she wouldn't win the title of homecoming queen. But Lori eventually decided that um, she would attend the homecoming dance even if she didn't win the title of homecoming queen, and she's glad that she did attend the homecoming dance after all. Lola, though, is confused. She says that she brings up that Carol Pingree won the title of homecoming queen. Lori confirms that is true. Carol Pingree did win the title of homecoming queen, uh, and Lori does admit that not winning the title of homecoming queen did sting at first, but then um, Lori did say that uh, she ended up having uh, a great night even uh, in the end. Yes, Lori says in the end she still had a great night. She got to spend uh, time with Bobby and dancing with him. And after Lori explains this, um, Lori then mentions, uh, yes, Lori then says something along the lines about how competition becomes harder when you rise up in the ranks or rise up through the ranks. And, um, and you shouldn't let um, those harder challenges or the more difficult competition get in the way of doing something that you enjoy. That's along the lines of what Lori says. And Lori then inquires if Lola feels up to participating in the pageant. Lola says that, yes, she was um, inspired to participate in the pageant after all, but she thinks that it's too late. The pageant will begin in 10 minutes, and Lola doesn't think that there's any way uh, to prepare within those 10 minutes. Lori, though, has a solution to that. She calls Lincoln through video chat, and Lincoln helps Lori um, with some advice about how to help prepare Lola for the uh, pageant. So the next scene happens at a later point in time when the pageant uh, begins. So Lori is watching, uh, watching the pageant, and Lincoln is watching through video chat. And we do get to see Lola's performance during the talent portion and the interview portion for the... Um, for the uh, for this pageant, and Lola does give does give great performances during both of these uh, portions, and uh, in the end, um, the announcer is about to reveal the um, top three um, the top three winners for this pageant. So Claudette is the third place winner, and uh, Jackie is the second place winner, and uh, China. Uh, is the, um, yes, China is the winner, the first place winner for the pageant. Initially, Lola is disappointed that she didn't make it to the top three for this pageant, but Lola uh, still congratulates, um, congratulates the, um, uh, those three pageant contestants for uh, making it to the top three. Lori and Lincoln, through video chat, uh, do congratulate Lola, Lola for um, the great effort that she put into the um, that she put into uh, her performances. Yes, Lori and Lincoln uh, praise Lola for her performances, even though she didn't make it to the uh, top three. 
and um, and uh, while yes, um, while Lincoln and uh, Lori are um, yes, Lincoln and Lori um, congratulate Lola for giving it her best uh, shot, and Lola does appreciate um, appreciates their praise, and she says that um, uh, she is glad that she participated. Uh, in the pageant, even though she didn't uh, win. Although, yes, Lola actually has to say that she didn't win because she still can't bring herself to actually say lose. Jackie then approaches um, Lola, and Jackie congratulates Lola for a great performance throughout the pageant. Jackie says they're going to have to keep their eyes peeled for Lola uh, when next year rolls around. After Jackie leaves, um, Lincoln starts to become inspired about how they should handle um, next year's um, performance for uh, the performance for next year's pageant. So Lincoln is starting to um, come up with ideas or suggestions. Then Lori hangs up the phone, and Lori um, thinks that um, yes, Lori then tells Lola that they should go to the spa to celebrate um, to celebrate now that the pageant is over. So Lori and Lola prepare to head off to the spa, and that is how we end this segment. So this segment um, features, yes, this segment mostly focuses on two of the Loud sisters, um, Lori and Lola. And, um, and I guess you could say Lola is more so the viewpoint character, since, um, since the segment mostly focuses on Lola participating in her first regional pageant. But Lori could also be considered the spotlight character. Yes, you could say both Lori and Lola are the spotlight characters, but Lola is the viewpoint character since the main focus of the segment is Lola participating in her first regional pageant. Uh, most of the other Loud Sisters um, don't really, um, don't really, um, uh, or yes, the other Loud Sisters uh, just appear at the beginning of the segment. And uh, Lincoln himself, um, or yes, in Lincoln, and Lincoln, um, he takes a back seat. Um, yes, Lincoln still does play somewhat of a role, or at least, yes, um, Lincoln doesn't have, um, or yes, Lincoln takes a back seat compared to Lori and Lola, but he still has a more prevalent role when compared to um, the other Loud sisters um, that aren't Lori and Lola. And, um, and yes, um, this segment does bring up um, some serialized elements, uh, more specifically from season one's Toads and Tiaras. Like I mentioned in the recap, Lincoln brings up the time when he was a pageant coach for both Lana and Lola during Toads and Tiaras. So this um, continues those serialized elements by showing Lincoln uh, Lincoln's knowledge when it comes to pa pageants, or yes, Lincoln's uh, knowledge and expertise when it comes to um, uh, preparing for pageants. And some would say that it is rather heartwarming that Lincoln uh, was very enthusiastic about um, helping Lola out with the uh, pageant. Uh, because, yes, in Toads and Tiaras, Lincoln's motivation, or Lincoln's main motivation for helping, um, for being a pageant coach, yes, Lincoln's main motivation for being a pageant coach in Toads and Tiaras uh, was, the, um, was the tickets for Dairyland. So seeing that Lincoln was, at, uh, was honestly enthusiastic about helping uh, Lola with, um, with preparations for the pageant, even though there were no dairy tickets, uh, Dairyland tickets. Yes, there were no Dairyland tickets involved for this pageant, but Lincoln was still um, enthusiastic about helping Lola out. So many fans do consider that to be heartwarming. And I guess I'll bring it up now. I know some fans weren't happy with the ending of the segment when Lori hung up on Lincoln when he was starting to get enthusiastic about the pageant for next year. And some fans, um, though, didn't mind it so much. Um, some fans do bring up that uh, it's not unheard of for relatives to hang up on each other like that, or that does happen uh, from time to time. And myself, um, yeah, I didn't really have a problem with it. Um, yeah, I didn't really have a problem with it. I get that. Um, I get that it was, um, yeah, that sort of happened before. Like, um, uh, yes, that's happened before. I've had some relatives of my own that would hang up on uh, another relative when they would go on a tangent, but uh, they never really meant any ill will by it. It was just more like saying now's not the time uh, to continue talking, especially because some relatives of mine are very enthusiastic talkers, to say the least. But, but yeah, I know some fans weren't fond of that, um, but other fans didn't really um, take much issue with uh, Lori hanging up on Lincoln, but some did. You could say that's a bit of a debate I've noticed with some fans. Uh, of the show. 
Now, otherwise, um, yes, while Lincoln did get um, some did get some scenes where he got to play a role, like I said, Lori and Lola were the main focus. Um, Lola participating in her first regional pageant and Lori uh, chaperoning uh, for Lola while she was at the pageant because the Loud parents had other commitments. And I thought that this was, um, yes, Lori and Lola interacting with each other uh, was a nice moment. Um, uh, I have brought up before that there are certain Loud sisters that you don't usually see have one-on-one -on -one interactions with each other, or if they do, they're pretty rare. And yeah, I would say that, um, uh, yes, I would say Lori and Lola, um, yeah, there's maybe one or two other times I remember Lori and Lola having some one-on-one -on -one interactions with each other. Uh, so I think that's one of the rare one-on-one um, -on -one interactions between Loud Sisters. So I thought that was a nice touch. And it was interesting to know, or I, another thing I liked about this segment was that it helped to portray Lori and Lola's um, good qualities because I have brought up before Lori, Lynn, and Lola are the three Loud Sisters that probably have the most notorious of reputations among, uh, among fans of the show or fans of the franchise. And, um, and yes, yeah, so I think any chance that the show presents um, any of those Loud Sisters with their, uh, uh, with their more flattering qualities or their virtues, I think that's definitely a good thing because, um, because they do tend to be seen in a bad light by some fans because of certain entries or certain entries have not um, done those three loud sisters any favors. So seeing their good points being brought up is a good thing in my book. So we got that for Lori and Lola in particular. And I thought this was nice. Um, so some of those good moments we saw were, um, yes, for some of those um, good moments that we got to see where Lori, when Lori thought that Lola was ill, Lori was willing to give up uh, time at the spa to uh, help cheer Lola up. And Lori was willing to, um, um, was willing to help Lola up, or yes, um, Lori was willing to cheer Lola up by, um, by um, uh, trying to get her all sorts of um, nail polish or balloons and flowers and even some chocolate chip cookies and milk. And uh, Lola pointed out how those, um, Yes, Lola pointed out how those um, how those um, items were rather expensive, but Lori was still willing to um, buy those items even though they were expensive because she cared about her uh, ill sister and she wanted to help her ill sister feel better, or alleged ill sister in, in reality, but uh, Lori was under the impression that Lola really was ill. So that was nice to see Lori care about... Um, to care about... Uh, uh, one of her siblings when they were ill, and she was willing to um, get all sorts of items to help cheer the sibling up in question, even though um, it cost a lot of money. And in Lola's case, the good thing about Lola here was that um, Lola did feel guilty about um, about Lori um, uh, uh, paying for all these expensive items, or Lori giving up time at the spa to cheer her Lola up. Lola did feel guilty about it, and while Lola's and Lola's reason for pretending to be ill wasn't to take advantage of Lori, um, Lola simply just wanted to uh, not participate in the pageant. Uh, Lola was honestly under the impression that Lori would just um, go to the spa, and Lola, uh, yes, Lola was just under the impression that Lori would just go to the spa, but. Uh, but Lo Lola didn't anticipate that Lori would actually uh, try to spend time with Lola to cheer her up, and Lola did feel guilty about it. So that was another good moment. It showed Lo Lola didn't try to take advantage of Lori, and she felt guilty that, um, that she ended up taking advantage of Lori, even if that wasn't her intention. And another good quality about Lola that was shown in this segment was that um, Lola was shown to be a graceful loser, or she took defeat with dignity. Lola didn't make it into the top three, or yes, Lola wasn't one of the top three winners for this pageant, but she still gave a great performance all the same. And while Lo Lola was initially disappointed, understandably so, um, she still was a good sport about not making it into the top three uh, positions. Or yes, um, Lola was still a good sport about not uh, being one of the top three winners. And some fans did notice that it seemed weird that Lola couldn't bring herself to say lose. Um, I think some fans have brought up that Lola did say the word lose in some other entries. Um, it has been a while since I've seen some of the other entries, uh, so my memory isn't fully refreshed, but 
Um, some fans have speculated that maybe Lola was just having a hard time seeing Luz in this segment because it involved um, it involved um, her field of expertise, uh, pageant uh, pageant uh, contests. So maybe that has something to do with that. Maybe um, it's different when you're when it's um, not in your field of expertise. That might be the case. Um, that's what some fans have speculated anyway. And yeah, so Lola being a good sport and. Yeah, Lola being a good sport about not making it into not being one of the top three winners definitely helped uh, win over some fans, or some fans have a better opinion of Lola uh, because of that and how she didn't want to take advantage of Lori. And other fans have um, better impressions of Lori um, with the way that she showed concern for Lola when she thought Lola was sick. And they also appreciated how Lori tried to cheer Lola up uh, and give her a pep talk by relating to... Um, uh, a similar situation in her life, the homecoming dance. That's another example of serialized elements. Um, Carol winning the um, homecoming, uh, yes, Carol winning the title of homecoming queen uh, was brought up before in um, several other um, segments, or at least two other segments. And, um, and so this was another example of serialized elements for uh, The Loud House. Oh, one thing I did notice while I'm on the topic of Carol Pingree, I noticed that Lola said Carol Pingray rather than Pingree, and um, because in other entries Carol's name was Carol's last name was said to be Pingree, so if I had to guess, maybe that's just a dialect thing. I I think that just might be um, that just might be a dialect thing on Lola's part. Um, that's my speculation anyway, uh, but I thought I'd bring that up for anyone who was uh, curious. And otherwise, um, yes, we do get to meet some other pageant contestants in this um, in this uh, segment. Um, uh, China, Jackie, and Claudette, and they actually do return uh, in one of the comics. Yes, in one of the comic stories, um, those three actually do return. They're featured in a comic story. Um, I don't think they appear again in the rest of season three. I'll have to uh, check when I. Um, refresh my memory in the, um, or I'll have to refresh my memory when I check the later season three entries, but I don't think they appear again in the rest of season three. Maybe they'll return in season four or season five, but they do at least return in a comic story. Oh, and I'll go ahead and bring it up now, but in Jackie's case, Jackie's case is actually un interesting because Jackie, there's going to be another character named Jackie that's introduced later on in season three. So, uh, so the Jackies are going to be an example of the one Steve limit um, not being um, not being followed. For those who are unfamiliar, the one Steve limit is a trope where works of fiction give uh, each character their own unique name, or in a work of fiction, no two characters share the same name. And uh, yes, while it's true in real life, people in real life do share names. Um, the intense. Uh, the intention in the works of fiction are to keep um, everything um, are to keep everything organized or uh, not cause any confusion by giving characters um, the same name. Um, so that's why the one Steve limit is usually enforced within works of fiction, but it's not enforced here. Um, we have seen other examples with characters sharing names uh, in the show beforehand. Um, but um, Jackie, the Jackies stand out because so far, as of the recording of this video, neither of the Jackie's last names are revealed. So that kind of does add to um, uh, some confusion. Some fans are hoping that eventually the last names of these Jackies will be revealed so that uh, we can easily distinguish the two Jackies. But we'll talk about that other Jackie once uh, the recap and thoughts video uh, for the segment I'm thinking of um, eventually comes. But otherwise, I would say that's about it for this segment. So, like I said, I did like how this segment showed Lori and Lola in a better light, considering that they're two of the three Loud Sisters that usually have notorious reputations among some fans of the franchise. And it was nice to see, um, uh, it was also nice to see Lori and Lola interacting one-on-one -on -one with each other, because uh, their interactions, their one-on-one -on -one interactions are, I would say, on the rarer side compared to some other one-on-one um, -on -one Loud Sister interactions. Uh, but yes, I thought their one-on-one -on -one interactions were nice. Um, it was nice to see some of their virtues brought up because of um, the uh, notorious reputations that they have with some fans of the show. 
And I think the lesson about how um, how challenges do become more difficult when you rise through the ranks. Um, yes, I think that's a valid lesson about how challenges become more difficult when you rise through the ranks. But you shouldn't uh, stop doing things that you enjoy, even if things become more difficult. I thought that was a good lesson. And yeah, I think Jackie, um, Claudette, and China are um, are great new additions. Um, they help to. Um, um, they help to expand named characters within uh, Lola's field of interest, and they were brought back in a comic story, so maybe there's a chance we'll see them again in the future. And otherwise, yeah, I would say that's about it for um, this segment. So as of this video, we've now discussed the A segment for episode 64 of The Loud House on this channel. Take care, and until next time...